so our goal here with the Model S was to create not, not the, the best electric car, but actually the best uh, car of any kind. Crazy things can come true. It's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> A, a very big sign, um, <laughs> uh, and we're going to raise the curtain. So what we're looking at over there, that's a quarter section of the Falcon 9 uh, uh, 17 foot diameter fairing. It's uh, 17 foot diameter obviously and, 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 and 50 feet long. It's capable of taking the largest satellites in the world and it, it could actually literally fit a, a city bus in, in, in that uh, fairing. It's that big because that's, that's just a quarter section of it. Behind me is where the where Falcon 9 would would sit uh, during launch, and the, the big transformation that's going to occur over the next few months is the construction of the launch mount, and uh, we're going to have the hangar uh, constructed. Well, we're super excited, obviously, at SpaceX to uh, announce uh, that that some of the details around the, the Falcon Heavy rocket, which is our, uh, our our large rocket development, really large rocket development, um, and. Uh, uh, it, this is something we, we've alluded to in the past, uh, but uh, uh, I've only just recently um, completed the, the design um, and uh, have been able to increase the, the thrust uh, and payload capability of the rocket uh, considerably over our previous estimations. As you can see, the, the Model S uh, can easily handle seven people plus uh, baggage. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Ben, uh, you've been, been working late. Oh, I must have been there all night. Um, I knew that was going to happen, actually. <laughs> um, so as it turns out, the, the Model S can actually handle eight people plus luggage. <laughs> So one of the main inventions of the Model X is something that we call the falcon wing doors. And the thing that makes this unique is it's, it's a split gull, it's, it's, it's like a gull wing, but it's a split gull wing. So we call it the falcon wing. And that's really important. Um, because with the split gull wing, with the second hinge, we're able to make it such that the, the door opens out very, very slightly. So. That is how a 21st century spaceship should land. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting here in the <laughs> sitting here in the pilot seat. And pull it down. So the, we've we've aimed for something with the. Grand uh, version 2 for the interfaces and for the overall aesthetic of something that's very clean, uh, very simple. Uh, and uh, so as, as the pilot, you were able to interact with uh, the, the screens overhead. Uh, 
Uh, so our options for, for, going to, for, for becoming a multi-planet species within our solar system are, uh, are limited. Uh, we have, in terms of nearby options, we've, we've got Venus, uh, but Venus is a high pressure, a su super high pressure hot acid bath. Um, so that, that would be a tricky one. Uh, Venus is not at all like um, the, the, the goddess. This is not in no way similar to, to, to the actual goddess. Um, so it's uh, really difficult to make things work on Venus. Uh, Mercury is also way too close to the sun. Um, we could go potentially on, the Mar one, of the, on the, one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, but those are quite far out, much further from the sun, a lot harder to get to. It really leaves us with one option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's, that's Mars. Uh, we could conceivably go to our moon, um, and I certainly have nothing against going to the moon, but I think it's, it's challenging to create a, uh, a become multi-planetary on the moon because it's, it's much smaller than, than, than a planet. Uh, it doesn't have any atmosphere. It, it's not as resource rich as Mars. Um, it's got a 28 day day, whereas the Mars day is 24 and a half hours. Um, and it, in general, Mars is, is far better suited to ultimately scale up to be a self-sustaining civilization. Give the trucks a moment. Give the trucks a moment. All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the to the welcome to the Tesla semi truck event. I hope you like what you see. So it turns out there was some cargo in the truck. There's some cargo in the truck. Uh, we thought we'd bring it out. Um, we, we started Tesla. We started Tesla with a sports car, Tesla Roadster. <laughs> so that's that. That baby got us going. Uh, it's it's the it was the, the, the foundation of the whole company. It was the Tesla Roadster. People have asked us for a long time, when are you going to make? a new Roadster. We are making it now. Yeah! Um, I mean, it's kind of silly and fun, but I, I, think, I think that's, you know, silly fun things are important. Um, and <laughs> normally for a new rocket, you know, they'd launch like a block of concrete or something like that. I mean, that's so boring. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's just the imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. Um, and it's, it's still tripping me out. Um, but if you can do um, hundreds of tunnels and you can have many small stations woven throughout the fabric of a city, uh, you can actually, without even the city even appearing different, uh, you, you, could, um, you, you could solve the, the transport problem. You really need a very small footprint to enter the tunnel network. It's like not much bigger than a parking space. Um, and then you can inter interleave these um, entrances and exits throughout the city. Um, yeah. All right. The Model Y. Yeah. I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride.
um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important. Uh, the threads are very tiny, um, and there's a lot of them, and they're very carefully placed. And um, the, the, the operation on a per-chip basis, uh, it, it involves just a, a, a two-millimeter mil, two uh, incision, which is dilated to eight millimeters, um, and then the, the, the chip is placed, placed through that, and then it, re, it goes back to being two millimeters, and you can basically go shut. Uh, you don't even need a stitch. Uh, this is, this is, I think, the, the most inspiring thing that I've ever seen. The, the, the point of this, uh, this presentation and this, this event is really, uh, there, there, there are two elements to it. One is to uh, in, inspire the public, um, get people excited about uh, our future in space, and, um, and get people fired up about the future. The, you know, what, what um, there are so many things to worry about, so many things to be concerned about. Um, there's, there are many troubles in the world, of course, and we, th these are important and we need to solve them. But we also need things that make us ex excited to be alive, that make us glad to wake up in the morning um, and be fired up about the future and, and think, yeah, the future's going to be great. You know, and, and this space exploration is one of those things. Um, and becoming a, a space-faring civilization, being out there among the stars, this is one of the things that I know makes, makes me glad to be alive. I think it makes many people glad to be alive. It's one of the best things. And there's, there's really, we're, we're, we're faced with a choice. Which future do you want? Do you want the future where we become a space-faring civilization and are in many worlds and are out there among the stars or one where we are forever confined to Earth? And I say it is the first. And, and, and I hope you agree with me. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this knot in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching this knot. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. Yeah, and I mean, our, our goal is like basically to uh, do something that, uh, it, you know, to, it, have, it, have it be sort of interesting, fun, and, and ultimately useful, um, and to spur uh, uh, creative ideas for what is actually the smartest way mm -hmm. to take the trillions of tons of carbon that we, we've removed from the ground and will remove from the ground, mm -hmm. um, from deep, deep underground, and, and, and we've, we've placed that carbon in the atmosphere and oceans, um, which obviously changes the, the chemical constituency of the surface of the Earth. Yeah. Um, and since we know that uh, long term, we're going to have to have renewable energy anyway, um, uh, because we'll we'll run out of oil and gas. It's not going to last forever. Um, so we know we know where this ends up. This has to end up with uh, renewable, sustainable energy. Um, it's tautological. Um, it's really just a question of do we try to get there sooner or later. I suppose it does get a little bit easier, but it's still extremely intense. And uh, I I usually can't sleep the night before a launch, and that's was true of. The, the night before this one, so I haven't had much sleep. Um, but uh, you know, fortunately, we've got a great team that are really, um, really proud of the incredible work the team has done in partnership with NASA. And uh, yeah, I suppose it'll, it, it gets a little bit easier, but but still, still pretty intense, I have to say. <laughs> um, so um, yeah. I can't, I can't, it's hard to believe that uh, we're here doing this, quite frankly. You know, it feels like a dream. <laughs>